This is Lumix S5 Mark II. I feel good about this. Finally, it's time to try this camera. I got many comments and requests like, hey, what do you think about uh, S5 Mark II? Aren't you gonna review S5 II? S5 II versus uh, FX30 A7 IV, which is better. This camera is something that I can't avoid to talk. A7 IV is almost perfect hybrid camera, but it's $2,500. FX30 great video camera is $1,800, but it's APS-C. This Lumix S5 Mark II is full frame and it's $2,000. If you choose the lens kit with this 20mm to 60mm and depends on where you live, you can get the twin lens kit combo uh, lens kit lens kit with this 20mm to 60mm and this 50mm f1.8. The S5 Mark II will be the better deal. And the camera spec is more than those two Sony cameras at some point. Well, there is no way to ignore this camera, right? So today I will be 100% honest with this camera to get to know more about this for future S5 Mark II related videos. But first, let's see what this can do. How is the actual real life camera performance? Okay, so as always, before you getting into this video, please hit the subscribe if you haven't to grow this channel. I need your support. So first, let's look at the overall spec. This is Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II, which has 24 megapixel full frame sensor that can produce rich raw photos and provide us many recording options like 6K, 5.9K, DCI 4K, and 4K. And this Mark II has better and stronger autofocus system than former S5, you know, old version. This could be a huge deal for Lumix users. Okay, now let's dive deep in the image quality. So this S5 Mark II has many recording and frame rate options. There are 6K, 5.9K, 3.3K, DCI 4K, 4K, and 1080p. The great thing is there is no crop when it's 6K, 5.9K, DCI 4K as long as the frame rate is below 30 FPS. 6K is a great option. As you can see, the detail level is crazy. But I think you're gonna be using normal 4K, 4 to 2, 10 bit mostly. Up to 60 FPS is available in this 4K with APS-C crap. So you can have this slow motion. Well, there are many recording options like this, but it's a little confusing, especially for beginners. But if you potentially use this camera in many different kinds of situations, those options would be great to have. Personally, I like the 17 by 9 6K option. It's pretty useful for me, especially when I wanna use both of Blackmagic 6K and some compact autofocus camera, this will be the good friend. So now let's talk about the vlog. This was my first Lumix experience, but I loved it. More than 95% of shots in intro B-roll was shot on vlog of this S5 Mark II. And I felt it was so easy to color grade. They were processed in the way I like, but they could be usable as soon as throwing the basic lot on footages. What I mean by that is the color depiction is so good. I didn't have a weird color shifting issue which gave me a tons of effort to fix. Just add some contrast and saturation and it's good and natural already. The color reproducibility is high. This time I shot those on 1600 Kelvin because I wanted some warm tone. And this camera gave me exactly what I wanted. And this has 14 plus stops dynamic range. 
which gives you the flexibility of shadow and highlight like this. 14 plus stops dynamic range is pretty average in the market right now, but having this dynamic range in the full frame sensor with this price, that is huge, right? And the low light performance is pretty much average. I guess this camera is not a high sensitivity machine like a Sony a7S III, FX3, but this has dual native ISL 640 and 4000. So this can handle the low light street pretty well without noises. But when it's extremely dark, it's hard. So I think this low light performance is similar to a7 IV, but think about how much this is. I think I can say this is doing pretty good job. Okay, now let's talk about the autofocus. I don't know how it was before on the old version S5, but as I heard, it was not that good, right? I still can't believe it because this camera has amazing autofocus performance. First of all, there are many stops and focus speed and tracking sensitivity. When they are at the middle, zero, you can have this smooth, natural focus motion. I think this focus motion is better than Sony cameras. It's very human's finger twisting focus ring focus motion. I can see the focus is literally moving from the subject to subject. The motion is so seamless. When it's high speed and high sensitivity, it's so fast. But still, the motion doesn't change. Also, this has a target detection mode, like human and eye plus face and animal plus human. Basically, they're working well. But when something was blocking the face, it lost the focus. But most of the time, it tracked the subject really well. In this scene, I touched my face on the screen, and it kept tracking it no matter how the light changed. Or in this scene too, no matter how I moved, it didn't miss the focus. I think this autofocus is pretty enough for making videos as I do, but when it comes to the accuracy, I like Sony better. Image stabilization. This is hard to judge because I think the ability itself is better than Sony maybe. I mean, it's super great. There are some boosting options, especially when you use electronic mode, you can run. But the problem is the distortion at the edge of image. It gets obvious, especially when it's wide angle like 20 mil. Even when it's at normal mode, the edge is waving. I think this might be uncomfortable for some people. I guess this is very strong video feature, but this is not for making productions. For vlogging daily basis use, it's pretty good function. So this has 6K and the VLOG quality is really good, but they are not a big strength of this camera to me. Video functions. This has something that Sony doesn't. First, the real-time LUT. You can apply the LUT you want on both of video and photo. This is pretty necessary for me when I shoot log. Second, this can show the histogram, waveform, vector scope, and you can move them like this. And you can see the focal length on a screen. Also, this luminance spot meter is so useful to decide exposure. And there are anamorphic D-squeeze display, monochrome, live view, night mode. I don't know when to use, but yeah, that is something very interesting. Like those, this camera has great and powerful tools to shoot videos. Okay, now let's talk about the build quality and the usability. So first, this weighs 1.64 pounds, which is pretty average as this type of cameras. And the grip, the holding feel, are similar to Sony a7 IV and the Fuji X8IIs, but it feels a little thinner, compact. Buttons and dials. I think this camera is very easy to use. Because like this, buttons have functions already. You can customize them later, but for beginners and new Lumix users like me, those buttons are so nice and easy. What I like is that you can change ISO white balance by pushing those buttons. But they only go up, you gotta use this wheel to go back. So you wanna set the lowest ISO at the default. And this focus mode button. You can change single, continuous, and manual focus by this switch. And there are several focus area options, and you can turn on and off the target detection by touching the screen. This function is so good, I don't want to let it go. Dials are very simple, aperture, shadow speed, and just wheel, and this mode selection, photo, drive, selection, dial. The menu is very simple. I am the Sony user, but finding what I want is easy. Those icons guide you to where you want to go, even if you are new to the camera. But I just wanted to this resolution frame rate option at the top. And when you want to go to the next section, you gotta go back to the far left and change the page. 
this slows me down a little. Overall, the usability is very instinctive. It's nice and easy to find what you want. But two things. First, only SD cards are available for this camera. You can't use uh, CF Express cards like this. Second, those covers are very annoying. You know, it's too soft. It's hard to open and close. I don't like this. All right, at the last, let's talk about the photography performance. This shoots 24 megapixel raw photos. I didn't get any special feelings for shooting and editing them. There is no good or bad uniqueness. It's just pretty normal raw photos. But there is a fun feature. You can apply the LUT on photo as well as video. I don't recommend use Vlog plus LUTs on photography because that generates noises. But this, my photo style Cine D2 looks so good. What I do is customize those like highlights, shadow and saturation stuffs and apply the LUT you want. Then shoot RAW plus JPEG. Now you can have colors you want while you are shooting. That JPEG will be saved and also the RAW will be saved too. So you can send that JPEG to your smartphone and post it on Instagram and later on your computer, you can edit raw version. I don't use continuous shooting that much, but I guess this is pretty enough. Like up to 9 FPS for up to 200 frames on the conical shutter and 30 FPS for up to 200 frames on electronic shutter. Okay, this is it. So what do you think about this camera, Lumix S5 Mark II? I think this is the deal breaker. I mean, in a good way. The high spec for both of video and photo, especially the video performance is beyond $2,000. I think when you just look at the only uh, video performance, this is more than a 7 IV, maybe more than FX3, uh, A7S3, except the low light performance. This got so many great filmmaking functions that Sony CineLine has. Plus this got more than 4K options. And again, it's $2,000. But when you talk about the overall performance, like autofocus and image stabilization quality and the lens choice that is huge, still Sony cameras would be better, at least for me. But I think there will be more lens choices for this camera and Lumix will improve autofocus and image stabilization. So I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe this will be the new king of the mirrorless era in a few years. I don't know, who knows? Honestly, when it comes to the only image quality, this is already the king. It's so easy to use and so easy to have the great result, but still it's not perfect. Sony a7 IV, FX30, and this Lumix S5 Mark II. Oh, and the Fuji X8-2S. Oh man, it's a great unhappiness. You know, it's fantastic that we have so many great options, but at the same time, it's hard to uh, make a perfect decision for you. But I think seeing the overall figure from a few steps away position is really important. Being obsessed with only one thing might lead you to the regret. Instead of that, being obsessed with yourself, with your dream, with your passion, with your desire, that is the first step to make a decision. Okay, this is it. If you have any questions, just shoot me anytime, anywhere. And if you like this video, show me a thumb and hit the subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Ciao.